Hi everybody, I'm Michael, I'm a landscape architect and environmentalist. And today we're gonna to go with Dr. Jason Downing and we're gonna go on a tour with him to see how you can attach an orchid to a tree or palm in your yard. So, you ready to dig in? Let's grow. Today we're gonna to go on an educational orchid adventure at Fairchild Tropical Botanic Gardens. I'm gonna be doing voiceovers because it's so windy and everyone's got the masks on and it's hard to hear what the instructor is going to say. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing that Dr. Downing mentioned is to know your orchid type. If you're gonna be attaching this to a tree in your yard or a palm, you need to know if your orchid is a shade loving or a sun-loving orchid. The example he has here is a Phalaenopsis. That is a shade-loving orchid. So you're going to want to attach that to a tree with a lot of dense canopy overhead. But if you have a Cattleya, for example, you're going to need to look for an area on the side or the edge of your tree where it can get more sun so your orchid can bloom. Or on a palm, uh, which doesn't tend to have as much canopy as a tree, and a Cattleya would do better, if you face it towards the south. So that's one of the uh, first things that he uh, mentioned uh, right out the gate is to know your orchid. And there's many online sources that you can get um, additional information. One of them is the American Orchid Society. The next step that Dr. Downing recommends is to prep your orchid so it can be easily attached to your tree or palm. And what he starts to do here, you can see, is he starts to talk about the dreaded sphagnum moss that many orchids are packed in when they're sold uh, to us. He says that is not a healthy medium for orchids to grow. It can choke out the roots and cause rot. And he highly recommends that you remove the moss and any growing medium if you're going to be attaching your orchid to a tree. He went on to say that you should probably remove sphagnum moss altogether. It's just done by the growers to keep the roots moist for selling, but it doesn't do any good for your orchid. It just causes problems down the road with rot, too much moisture sitting on there. Your orchid roots need to dry out between watering, so he recommends using a bark and charcoal mix. And I brought up Lekka. He says that's okay as well. To use for your orchids if you're not going to be attaching them to a tree and if you're going to be using them in a pot in your home or your balcony. The third step is to trim away any dead roots and just like I have done videos on this and a lot of other great YouTubers uh, who grow orchids he recommended having a nice sharp set of shears but to always clean them with alcohol at least 60%, 70% isopropyl alcohol and or uh, hydrogen peroxide, 3%. He has uh, um, alcohol here. And um, you may know from my, my prior videos on taking care of orchids, I also like to wash my hands because if you're gonna be trimming the roots or any dead roots uh, of your orchid, your hands are also in there too. And we carry a lot of, carry a lot of stuff on our fingertips that we don't want to inadvertently get into the orchid. So spray down your shears, your hands with alcohol, and then start looking for the dark and mushy roots or dried out roots. And you can see uh, Dr. Downing here doing a demonstration of a Cattleya and how he's removing a lot of excess uh, roots that are, that are dead or dying that will not help the orchid attached to the tree. He did say to be aware of not getting too close to the growing stem of the orchid so you don't inadvertently cut too much away. And when you're done trimming, you're ready to go. Here, he's showing the Phalaenopsis with the sphagnum all removed and also the Cattleya that he trimmed out all the dead and dying roots from. And now for the last step is to align your orchid and attach it to the tree or palm. What Dr. Downing recommends on, a, on alignment is to find the side where your roots would most likely, the new roots, 
on the healthy roots would most likely attach to the uh, tree or palm. And using gardening uh, twine or zip ties, he actually even recommends using zip ties, but not Velcro to attach. I asked that question about Velcro and he said he does not recommend that because the Velcro strips are a little too wide and will leave too much moisture. But the plastic zip ties are okay and he actually thinks uh, probably the best um, material would be uh, a garden twine made of hemp that's biodegradable and that won't um, harm the tree or palm because it will break away over a period of time. And the final recommendation Dr. Downing has is to Look at your orchid carefully and see how it was typically growing. If it's growing more upright, you want to put it on a horizontal branch like he was just displaying there on his arm. Or if it's kind of slanted, you could put it on, the, on a vertical side of a palm or tree branch. Then take your twine or zip tie and right where the roots meet the stem, use that as your attachment point to the tree or palm and make sure it's snug to the tree and palm. You want those roots to be able to quickly adapt and grow onto the trunk. And that's how you do it, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we hope you learned a lot. I sure did on how to attach an orchid to a tree. And many thanks to, to the folks, especially Dr. Jason Downing here at Fairchild on how how you can oh look at that we have a little friend on how you can attach an orchid to a tree and have it flourish until next time bye if you found value in this video hit the subscribe button and the notification bell we post weekly thanks